Hey, happy Friday. This week, Apple made me question what a computer really is, Microsoft made me question what an app store really is, and Motorola launched some new phones. And I don't typically cover Motorola phones because they usually just bore me to death, but this week, it's different. Also, our weekly tech knowledge quiz this time is all about industry firsts. Which company was first to launch feature X, Y, or Z? So if you think you really know your tech trivia, we have 20 questions for you linked in the description, and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, starting with the most interesting releases of the week, we first have the Samsung Keyboard Trio 500, which is a keyboard with a dedicated DeX button for some reason that can connect to and switch between three different devices via Bluetooth. Then we have all of the stuff Apple announced, of which I think the $29 AirTags and the new iPads with the M1 chips were the most interesting. And finally, we have two new phones from Motorola called the G60 and the G40 Fusion. And these Motorola phones are kind of interesting to me because I think they represent a major shift for the company. So these two are the newest addition to Motorola's new lineup that is rocking a new naming scheme and a new, even if in my opinion, kind of uninspired visual identity. Both of these are relatively subtle as changes go, but brands typically do these renamings and restylings whenever they want to tell the consumer, hey, pay attention to us, there's something new going on here. And that something in this case is clearly the price. The new phones are simply put dirt cheap. The G60, for example, has a 120 Hz full HD screen, a Snapdragon 732G chip, a 108 megapixel camera, etc., and it costs around the equivalent of 240 USD. Some corners have been cut, like using an LCD panel, for example, but that price still means that Motorola has changed their strategy dramatically and it is entering the price and spec wars against Xiaomi and Realme. I think that was kind of inevitable. In a very mature market like with smartphones, there's really only two strategies that tend to work at this point. The brands can either build a really strong, unique, premium brand like Samsung and maybe Oppo have done in the past, or they can fight on price like Xiaomi and Realme have. There's very little in between that actually tends to work. Motorola, LG, Nokia, and a bunch of other companies were stuck in this weird middle ground for years that never really worked for any of them, and I'm happy that Motorola have seemingly decided to leave this awkward middle and instead embrace one end of the spectrum. I just hope they have the stomach to actually see it through and compete with the aggressive companies. Okay, my next story of the week will be about the new iPad Pros announced by Apple, with the biggest news being that they now feature the exact same M1 chips as the new iMac and the latest MacBooks. The M1 has proven to be just an incredibly powerful chip even on the MacBook Pros, so that coming to the iPads is absolutely wild. And it gives a whole new meaning to Apple's previous iPad ads. What you doing on your computer? What's a computer? Yeah, I mean, what actually is a computer at this point? Back then, everybody was making fun of Apple for daring to suggest that their iPads were somehow on par with real computers, but at this point, Maybe they are. The new iPads have the same fantastic chips as the Macs. They have up to 16 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage, USB-C, Thunderbolt 4, etc. The only difference between them and Macs now is the form factor and the software. And remember, iOS and by extension iPadOS are just forks of OS X, the predecessor of macOS, so the OS running on the iPad and the OS running on Macs are just two different forks of the same operating system anyway. Under the hood, they are essentially the same system, but with a different user interface and a few extra bits added here or removed there. In other words, as of this week, Apple could basically snap a finger and have macOS run on iPads and have iPadOS run on Macs. I mean, they'd have to move a couple of lines of code around and bring, for example, camera software over from one operating system to the other. But that, at least on a scale of Apple, is technically almost trivial at this point. That is just wild, in my opinion. <laughs> And it really raises the question of what is next for these two operating systems. Will they just merge eventually to become the same thing? I'd like to know from you down in the comments, but my guess would be that, yeah, eventually they will. Over the last few years, the iPad went from being a stretched out phone to becoming more and more like a computer, gaining support to keyboards, a somewhat reasonable file explorer, a desktop class browser, etc. And the Mac became more like an iPad, getting essentially a souped up mobile processor, 
the ability to run iPad apps and an increased push towards the App Store. There are still gaps between the two, but the trend I think is really clear. These two categories are converging incredibly quickly, and I think in a few years there will be enough overlap where Apple will just merge the two operating systems into one and just let users switch between the user interfaces on the fly depending on what form factor they are on. Okay, and my third story of the week will be a report from Windows Central saying that Microsoft is preparing to launch a brand new Microsoft Store on Windows to replace the current one. This rumor was confirmed by multiple reporters. The new store is expected to launch at the end of this year. And while Windows Central expects improvements all around from improved visual experiences to better performance and stability, the real news is that the new store will reportedly be way less strict than the current one is. The current Microsoft store works kind of like a mobile app store. It is very centralized. So app developers actually have to package their apps in a certain way. They have to submit them to Microsoft and then Microsoft does everything, installing, uninstalling, payments, downloads, updates, all of the things. This theoretically makes the store more secure and seamless, but it has also meant that big established app makers like Adobe, who do not want to give up control over the installations and their payments, they have mostly just refused to adopt it. Ironically, even Microsoft Office, for example, has bailed on the store because it just wasn't flexible enough for them. So the new store will supposedly do away with all of that centralization and should be really open instead, letting developers submit pretty much any app, letting them use their own hosting and delivery networks, and even their own commerce solutions if they prefer to, or letting them pick Microsoft Solution if they like that more. So the store would basically just become a central location to find and download apps. The closed approach has clearly failed for the company again and again and again, so this more open approach is probably the only option left to the company at this point. And ironically, Windows Central reports that this approach will actually let them bring their own apps, including Office, Teams, Edge, Visual Studio, and so on, finally to the store as well. Ironic, but fingers crossed it won't be terrible. All right, and finally, remember to check out our release monitor in the Crowd app. We upload all of the new product releases almost hourly at this point, so you can keep track of every new gadget that launches. Fun fact, this week's community favorite seems to be the iPads so far. You can go and upload your favorites in the app as well to help them rise to the top. Links to the app are down in the description, and I'll see you next week.